Jonas Siegenthaler is back for five years on a very cheap deal. And why so serious? Oh, no, 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 wait, 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 wrong, wrong, wrong saying. Why so negative? Because the New Jersey Devils are on the come up. And given how the Metropolitan Division is, maybe the New Jersey Devils have a chance of making a wild card spot. We have a lot to talk about in today's episode. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked On Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked On Devils with Trey Matthews. Alrighty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on the Locked On Network. I'm your host, college hockey play-by-play announcer, and also Devils writer for Pucks and Pitchforks, Trey Matthews. So, this is my second episode back from my hiatus, and there's obviously a lot of Devils news I got to catch up on. In the previous episode, I talked about Jesper Bratt and his one-year extension. In today's episode, we're going to talk about Jonas Siegenthaler signing a five-year extension at a very cheap price, and also Miles Wood signing a one-year extension with the New Jersey Devils and what I anticipate from him and many other players. What do I mean by that? Well, we'll talk about that a little later, but first and foremost, guys, I just want to thank you for the support that you've shown me while I was on vacation because I still took to Twitter. I was still doing my menacing things on uh, the app and just saying like, Marty Brodeur is the greatest goalie to ever play. I get that's a bit of a hot take in the hot hockey uh, Twitter world, but at the same time, I genuinely believe that Marty Brodeur is the greatest goalie to ever play, and I think a lot of Devils fans can uh, back me up on that claim. But like I said, I know that's sort of a hot take in the hockey world, but at the same time, you guys showed a lot of love. Then somebody responded by saying that uh, Marty Brodeur isn't even a top five goalie, but then the New Jersey Devils were able to end that man's career and just say, yeah, Mr. Terrible Hockey Takes. And that was hilarious to see. So the fact that I was able to spark a debate, the fact that Bar Down was able to see it, and then they uh, posted about it on their respective website and just said, who's the greatest goalie to ever play? That was very humbling. I can't really prove uh, or not prove that it was solely from my tweet alone, but considering the fact that they posted a few days after I said my initial claim on Twitter, you know, uh, it's hard to believe that maybe I didn't play some sort of a factor into their overall uh, discussion. So once again, I want to thank you guys for the overall support that you showed me on Twitter. And I want to give a shout out to a big Marty Brodeur fan, and he goes by the username Kool Aid Man 420, and he has this sweet tattoo of Marty Brodeur just showing his overall fandom towards the greatest to ever play at the netminder position. Uh, as you can see, Marty Brodeur's jersey is on uh, his body. You can see the uh, Stanley Cup trophy, the obviously the goat right there. The colors are beautiful. I love it. So. Uh, shout out to his tattoo artist that he did, he or she did wonderful work on that. And also Kool-Aid Man left me a good review on um, Apple Podcasts. He said, longtime listener, love the content and the personality. Lifelong Devils fan from a small town in Canada. It's hard to find anything Devils related at such high quality with frequent uh, updates. And it's amazing. Trey does a great, good job of giving fans like myself something to look forward to. Keep up the great work. It's appreciated all around the world. Well, that's very humbling. Obviously, Canada is in North America, and it is a different country, so I wouldn't consider that around the world. But at the same time, it's very humbling to know that you guys actually genuinely care about my content and that you've been able to help me uh, grow the show in more ways than one, reach a 1,000 followers on Twitter. Personally, I didn't think I would ever get there. And then uh, I'm more than halfway to my goal of reaching a 1,000 subscribers. And like I said in the last episode, if I'm able to reach a 1,000 subscribers before the New Jersey Devils take the ice for their first regular season game, not preseason, regular season game, I will do a huge giveaway to show my gratitude and appreciate, uh, appreciative nature towards y'all. So once again, thank you for growing the show with me. Thanks for sticking by me. I know I'm not always correct, but at the same time, I think the one thing you can't deny about me is that I'm passionate what I do. So once again, guys, while I was on vacation, while I was on my hiatus, thank you for showing support on Twitter and just uh, you know, ma making uh, the, the discussion plausible of saying that Marty Brodeur is the greatest goalie to ever play and also the official New Jersey Devils Twitter page getting involved. That was really cool to see. So once again, guys, 
Thank you. And shout out to Kool-Aid Man for that sweet tattoo. Your tattoo artist has done wonderful work. So let's get on with the news. So let's talk about Jonas Siegenthaler and his extension with the New Jersey Devils because that was one of the first domino pieces to fall when I was on vacation. Obviously, I couldn't do an episode on it. So Jonas Siegenthaler signed a five-year, $17 million contract with the New Jersey Devils. Now, I think at first glance, I was like, wait, five years? How much? And then I see it's $17 million, which is $3.4 million annually. And I'm just like, oh, that's actually a pretty decent deal because uh, that's actually very cheap because 3.4 annually, just to give you guys some reference, Miles Wood signed a one-year $3.2 million contract. So the fact that we have Jonas Siegenthaler locked up for the next five years and it's a $3.4 million contract annually, I think Tom Fitzgerald did wonderful work in that regards because I was seeing a lot of discussion saying whether or not Jonas Siegenthaler would stick around on the team because when we drafted some known Nemets, it was just like, Who's going to go? Is, is it going to be Graves? Is it going to be Severson? Is it going to be Siegenthaler? Is it going to be one of those three players who is going to be on the chopping blocks for the New Jersey Devils, as in their tenure is going to come to an abrupt end? But uh, Siegenthaler signing that extension with the New Jersey Devils pretty much puts those rumors to rest. And I'm actually glad that it, uh, the rumors are put to rest right now because I really like Jonas Siegenthaler. I say that he was our best defenseman last year, and I think – the numbers prove it. Obviously, we did have Dougie Hamilton, but at the same time, it's just like Siegenthaler just showed the most consistency on the defensive end for New Jersey Devils, rarely missed a game, and he showed tremendous effort. Yes, he doesn't provide much offense, but at the same time, what he does on the defensive side of things is really a much need for the New Jersey Devils if they want to take their organization to the next level. And finding those diamond and roughs like Jonas Siegenthaler can pay dividends for the organization moving forward. So Siegenthaler signed to that five-year extension at a very cheap price. I think Tom Fitzgerald deserves a lot more credit. And I think a lot of people should be talking about that contract because at the same time, it's just like, we locked up our best defenseman or one of our best defensemen because Dougie Hamilton, I think he'll have a bounce back year and he'll get his name back into the Norris Trophy. But don't underestimate uh, the silent but deadly impact from players like Jonas Siegenthaler or Ryan Graves because what they do might not show up in the score sheet too often. But at the same time, I'm sure they don't mind that at all. They know what they bring to the organization. They know what they bring to the roster. And the thing about Jonas Siegenthaler, the fact that he doesn't provide that much offense yeah, I'm sure a lot of teams will be like, you know what? You don't provide any offense. Why would we want you on our team? But he doesn't hinder our offensive production. He doesn't hinder what we try to produce on the offensive side of things. So the fact that Jonas Siegenthaler is able to have that high of an impact, not provide much offense, but not slow us down, I think that was a great gift for the New Jersey Devils in the first place, trading him away from the Washington Capitals and you know, just the fact that he wasn't used all that much on the Capitals roster. I didn't really uh, think too much of the trade. I just thought, wait, we gave up a draft pick for Jonas Siegenthaler. So what? Like, well, what what good is that going to do us? But he proved me wrong. He, I think he proved a lot of people wrong. I think um, Tom Fitzgerald and Lindy Ruff, they both got together. And I think Lindy Ruff was lobbying for the services of Siegenthaler. And Tom Fitzgerald listened. And you know, we got we got our guy uh, signed for a long term deal. So I'm glad that Jonas Siegenthaler is going to be sticking around with this organization for years to come. And I I'm excited to see how he grows and develops. And I think the one thing I want to see from Jonas Siegenthaler is I would like for him to maybe score a couple goals here and there. I, I, I'm not saying he has to be a two way player, but it would definitely benefit us a lot. If he's able to net, I'd say like five or so goals uh, per year, because that's what I want to see out of him. I want him to maybe not be a legitimate offensive threat. Like I said, doesn't need to be a two way player, but it wouldn't hurt if he has, you know, some sort of offensive game to his resume, because uh, that can prove that can be proven to be very dangerous for a team like the Devils that's up and coming. And if he's able to develop that, then. Look out. I think Siegenthaler might uh, turn a lot of heads in the NHL. Not saying he's going to be an all-star, not saying he's going to win a Norris trophy, but at the same time, it could definitely just raise some eyebrows and just say, hmm, who is that cat for the New Jersey Devils? Like, uh, we didn't really have a scouting report on him. We didn't really do our research. We didn't do our homework. And yet he's able to just block the shots. He's able to redirect it. He's able to suppress it. He's able to assert himself. He has a big body. Maybe we should have done our homework. Maybe we should have just done more research on this player and informed our players like, hey, look out for Siegenthaler because he's actually a legitimate threat on the defensive side of things. So 
Siegenthaler re-signed with the Devils. I was very happy about it. I'm sure a lot of you were. So I'm glad that Siegenthaler is going to be with our organization for the next five years. And like I said, since Dougie Hamilton did have to deal with that facial fracture, since Dougie Hamilton did have to deal with a few other things and wasn't really able to recreate what he was able to do for the Carolina Hurricanes, Siegenthaler was by far our best defenseman. No ands, ifs, or buts about it. So that's my overall stance with Siegenthaler's extension. I like it. Cheap price. Great player. Low risk player because it's just like under the radar, but at the same time can have a high amount of impact for the New Jersey Devils. And I feel as though this is just something that's going to just go underneath the noses of a lot of teams and players, and they're not going to know what hit them. So Siegenthaler sticking around with the Devils organization for the next five years, really excited to see what uh, he develops into. Now, we're going to talk more about some other players that – I feel as though just fall underneath the nose for a lot of fans. And I feel as though fans need to be more appreciative for the New Jersey Devils because I released another tweet while I was on vacation that sparked some controversy and debate. And I want to talk more about that. But before we continue, I want to bring you guys the first live read this morning. And it comes from our friends at Built Bar. So if you haven't tried Built Bar or Puffs yet, well, you're depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There's a new flavor, ready, delicious, indulgent cookie dough covered in all chocolate. That's right. Built has done it again. Let me introduce you to your new favorite flavor. Cookie dough chunk puffs have a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks. And of course, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. All the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it. Plus, it's healthy for you. Cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories, and they have a whopping 15 grams of protein in them. Run to Built.com and snag you, you and your family uh, a box of uh, chunky dough puffs because it is the perfect treat, or you can find a really good hiding place and just hoard them for yourself. Like all Built Bars, the new cookie dough chunk puffs are covered in 100% real chocolate. That means they're healthy and tasty. Chocolate-covered cookie dough with a light, fluffy texture. So good. And guess what? Uh, they're not going to be top shelf because your mama ain't going to get to them. What's the great part about Built is that they're all uh, bars are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. Eat something that tastes good and is good for you. You are going to love cookie dough chunk puffs. The offer is go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15, you'll get 50% off your order. Again, use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. And now, the second live read comes from a product I literally use every day, and that is AG1, a.k.a. Athletic Greens. Because what is this stuff? Well, with one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and avogens to help start your day right. The special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, and immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all those things. The reason I take it is because my body is a temple and I got to start treating it as such. So it's a lifestyle that's friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. Contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything. While still tasting good, supports your uh, for better sleep quality and recovery, supports mental clarity and alertness. It's one thing that's the best with Athletic Greens. It uses the best of the best products based on latest science and with constant product iterations and third-party testing. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you one free year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with the convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look after your health. So go to Athletic Greens right now and purchase your uh, Athletic Greens today. Okay. So what was the tweet that I released that kind of gained, quote unquote, headlines around the New Jersey Devils hockey Twitter page? I said, why are New Jersey Devils fans so negative? Because I get that sometimes I could be a negative Nancy. I get that I pouted when Johnny Goodrow didn't sign with the New Jersey Devils. I get that I was kind of upset that we didn't go after Alex DeBrinkhead or Kevin Fiala when we had the chance. I get that I get trolled a lot when I just hype up a player that could potentially – come to the New Jersey Devils organization and it doesn't happen. And I get that sometimes I can have my negative moments, but what's the one thing I always say on this show? I say that I would like to believe that I'm one of the more positive New Jersey Devils personalities. And I feel as though uh, I don't put, you know, high expectations. I put realistic expectations, but at the same time, it's just like, these are expectations that are within the graphs of the New Jersey Devils. And I feel as though 
Last year, it was kind of unfair due to the fact that the Devils had to deal with COVID. They had to deal with injury. They were just trying to find their identity in the league. And I feel as though they can definitely uh, take a step forward. I talked about in the last episode, especially with Jesper Brad signed to a one-year extension. There's really no now or later. It's like we got to keep them happy and we got to show them that the New Jersey Devils were a legitimate team and that we're definitely going to be heading in the right direction because I think his agent is just, you know, feeding into his ear saying like, test free agency, you'll get paid, you'll go to a better team, yada, yada, yada. But at the same time, it's just like, we got to show Jesper Bratt we're a legitimate team. And I feel as though that sort of chip on the organization's shoulders will definitely go a long way for the Devils organization. So I'm going to go over some things that I feel as though New Jersey Devils fans need to be a little more grateful for and a little more happy because it's just like, I feel like we're so negative as a fan base. I get it. We've only made like one playoff appearance in the last decade or so. The last time we were legitimately a threat in the playoffs came back in 2012 when we went to the Stanley Cup Finals. We were pretty much a non-factor in 2018. I get that the saga of Taylor Hall didn't really go the way we anticipated. The saga of P.K. Subban, I get after the 2012 Stanley Cup Finals loss to the L.A. Kings, we kind of crashed and burned. But at the same time, I feel as though, and I'm not just saying this, I feel as though the New Jersey Devils have a lot of talent. They have a lot of untapped potential that we need to be grateful for and that we need to, you know, really be excited because what's the one thing I say about Keisha, Bratt, and Hughes? That's our baby big three. That's our band. That's our trio. And I feel as though they're definitely going to uh, just – shock the hockey world just a little bit. They're going to make some noise. I feel as though Keisha, Hughes, and Brad, they can all be all-stars at you know next year or something like that. I know I'm jumping ahead of myself, but I had a Senators fan say that the New Jersey Devils are like the Walmart version of the Oilers. And I'm just like, that's actually a compliment because the Oilers, they have Connor McDavid, they have Leon Dreisaitl, and obviously they have a few other players on their roster, and they're able to uh, make the playoffs consistently, and they're a historic franchise, and obviously Wayne Gretzky called us the Mickey Mouse organization. So I think that's actually a compliment, and that actually shows some improvement because it's just like we're the Walmart version of the Oilers? Okay, you know, just because we're not the name brand, doesn't mean we're not effective either. It's just like we're just not the name brand. So it's just like I think we can still go to the playoffs. Okay, so Jack Hughes is the Walmart version of uh, Connor McDavid. Okay, fine. I'll take that because it's like Connor McDavid is the best player in this generation. No ants, ifs, or buts about it. And if Jack Hughes is the Walmart version of him, I, I, you know, I get that, you know, that's not really a compliment. It's sort of like a backhanded compliment. But at the same time, it's just like, okay, that means like uh, compared to other players who have no chance of reaching to Connor McDavid's status, at least Jack Hughes is like the um, the the no name brand version of him. He's the store brand one. So I kind of like that. I, I'm I'm gonna ride with that. Quite honestly, I think that's a compliment. So thank you, random Senators fan, saying that we're the Walmart version of the Oilers. I'll take that any day of the week. So. Let's go over some things that the New Jersey Devils fans should be excited for. So with Jesper Bratt, Jack Hughes, and Nico Keisher, it's just like we have a baby big three. We have a team that can go to the next level with these three players. Jesper Bratt can potentially uh, take a few steps forward. Jack Hughes, I think he can be an all-star once again next year. Nico Heischer, it's been a couple seasons since he was named an all-star, but he's our captain. He's our leader. And I feel as though he's gotten more vocal these last couple seasons uh, since being announced the New Jersey Devils captain. And I feel as though that with his overall leadership and just his overall style of play, he could get his name into the Selkie Award. I feel as though Jack Hughes can someday win a Hart Memorial Trophy. And I feel as though Jesper Bratt, a borderline all-star, someone who missed the all-star game by just a couple inches, didn't get the last-minute fan vote. But I feel as though Jesper Bratt, if he's able to improve, he can definitely see his name on the all-star list this coming season, and I genuinely believe that. So uh, just be excited for the overall development of Jesper Bratt, Jack Hughes, and Nico Heischer. Now, let's talk about Dougie Hamilton. Dougie Hamilton was the top free agent last season, and the New Jersey Devils were able to get him. Yes, we weren't able to get Johnny Goodrow. Yes, we weren't able to get Kevin Fiala or Alex DeBrincat, some other names like Matthew Kachuk, who were not exactly free agents, but they were on the market and they were available for the taking. Yes, we weren't able to get those players. But at the same time, it's just like we got the top free agent last year and you can't win them all. But at the same time, you know, the fact that we were able to get our second choice in Andre Pilat, 
uh, like the Brad Pack told me in a Twitter space, it's like, I'd rather have my second option than my 10th option. I'd rather have plan B than X, Y, and Z. So the fact that we were able to get the top name free agent last season, I think uh, a lot of people are forgetting about Dougie Hamilton. And I think this might be a controversial take. I think he is severely underrated. I feel as though people are forgetting what Dougie Hamilton could potentially do. I feel as though people are forgetting that this guy was a finalist for the Norris Trophy. This guy was the top free agent available for all NHL teams when he was an unrestricted free agent. And the Dougie and Dougie Hamilton chose the New Jersey Devils, and we were able to get him. So there's another player that I think uh, is severely underrated on the Devils roster, despite him being a finalist for a Norris Trophy not too long ago. Jesper Boquist went on a huge FU tour, and I was just like, maybe it's our, in our best interest to release him. He shut people like me up. So look at Jesper Boquist and what he could potentially do. Eric Halla, Christy Flannery is huge on him, and Christy Flannery is a, fan, is a friend of the show. She was on it recently, and she said she loved Eric Halla and what he could potentially do for our bottom six. Now, let's talk about Miles Wood a little bit because Miles Wood obviously sat out all but three games last year for New Jersey Devils because he was recovering from surgery that an injury he sustained in uh, preseason. He signed a one-year $3.2 million extension with the New Jersey Devils. And like I said, that's a bit of an overpay, so I expect a, another trade for New Jersey Devils just to shed some calorie uh, space. But Miles Wood, I anticipate for him to just bring the grit, the tenacity, the effort, the determination on our bottom six, because that's something we've been missing last year. We were missing a spark plug. We were missing someone who can just get under your skin a little bit. That grit and determined uh, player, that person who's not afraid to get his hands dirty, that was Mr. Miles Wood. So I feel as though Miles Wood, another underrated player that a lot of people aren't really talking about, Miles Wood was able to have a pretty good season when he played in the 56 game uh, year not too long ago. So uh, during the 2020, 2021 season, he appeared in 55 games. He had 17 goals, eight assists for a grand total of 25 points. That's more depth for a bomb six. So I feel as though a lot of people aren't really talking about Miles Wood and what he could bring to the roster. Let's talk about Thomas Tatar. Thomas Tatar was literally tops on the Montreal Canadiens in scoring just a couple seasons ago. And yes, I get during uh, their finals run, he was pretty much a non-factor. But at the same time, let's not forget what Thomas Tatar could potentially do. And I feel as though, uh, similar to Yegor Sharangovich, yeah, their uh, offensive production was sometimes not there. But when it's there, it's big for the team. So I feel as though Thomas Tatar and Yegor Sharangovich, those are a couple other players that the Devils can look after. Dawson Mercer can provide some more offensive production for New Jersey Devils. That's someone not to sleep on. And then Andre Pilat, the big one, our big free agent signing. Yes, he's in his 30s, and yes, we kind of overpaid him a little bit. Yes, we gave him some incentives that I don't really agree on. And yes, uh, we signed him to a five-year deal. But at the same time, Andre Pilat, a two-time Stanley Cup champion, played with the Tampa Bay Lightning. I think he's looking for a choice to be the man because he was one of the more underrated players on the Tampa Bay Lightning's uh, organization. So I feel as though Andre Pollock can definitely provide something for a New Jersey Devils, something that uh, they've been missing the last couple of years after Taylor Hall left. Who's that leader? Who's the person who's rallying the troops? Who's that person who can basically just say, hey, you don't do that. You don't do this. You don't do that. You have to go here. Here's your play. Here's your help. Whatever the case might be, Andre Pollock could provide that for a New Jersey Devils. And when looking at the defensive side of things, Ryan Graves led the league in plus minus and defensive shares not too long ago. Ryan Graves had a career year when it came to uh, some offensive numbers because he was able to have a career high in assists and points. So I feel as though Ryan Graves is another player that falls underneath the radar. And I feel as though he can have great production as well. John Marino. John Marino, yes, he doesn't provide that much offense similar to Jonas Siegenthaler, but he's a great facilitator. He's a great passer. He has great speed. He knows where to locate uh, his teammates. So I feel as though Marino, especially with some playoff experience, can really help the New Jersey Devils in that regard. Mackenzie Blackwood, it's been confirmed by Ryan Novavinsky, who writes for NJ.com. He said that uh, Mackenzie Blackwood is not injured and he's back to skating with the team. 
So I feel as though Mackenzie Blackwood could have a, a breakout year for New Jersey Devils, and this is the year where he has that bounce back, uh, comeback sort of story, and he's able to just be that goalie that the New Jersey Devils have been searching for, be that Vesna uh, sort of esque player that I think the New Jersey Devils uh, see in him. I haven't given up on Mackenzie Blackwood, and I feel as though he could provide a lot of great production for New Jersey Devils. And now. Look at our young guys, Alexander Holtz, Riley uh, Walsh. There, there's so many, uh, or Nikita Ahotuk, or Fabian Zetterlin. There's a lot of great players in the pipeline for the New Jersey Devils. Another player, look for him in the World Juniors Championship, uh, Luke Hughes. I know there's going to be some question marks because his coach at the University of Michigan was uh, uh, fired or you know resigned. What there was some uh, there was some uh, controversy and scandalous things and. We'll talk about that in a future episode, but I think Luke Hughes, another player to be excited for. Simone Nemetz. Uh, we drafted him second for a reason, and I feel as though he could potentially uh, find himself in a couple games for the Devils this season. So there's a lot to look forward to for the Devils this year. And remember, they're in the middle of the pack when it comes to potentially winning the Stanley Cup Finals, according to their odds on betonline.net. So I feel as though when looking at the New Jersey Devils, yes, it's been a very rocky road. Yes, our rebuild has taken years. But at the same time, guys, let's just have a little faith. Because what if they stay healthy? What if everyone is able to just find that spark? What if uh, no one really deals with serious injury? COVID procedures have lightened up the last year or so in the NHL. So I feel as though that the New Jersey Devils could potentially make the playoffs. I think they have a legitimate chance. So I want you guys to take that into consideration. And I feel as though that the New Jersey Devils are going to be one of those slept on teams in the NHL. And I'm really excited to see what their production can lead them to. So why being so negative when there's a lot of positive things to look forward to? Our baby big three signing the top free agent last year and him not even reaching his full potential because he had to deal with injury. A goalie who's back from injury. We got Vitek Vanacek to back him up. Jonathan Bernier, for Christ's sake, a, a Stanley Cup winner, can potentially come back. Hopefully. I'm praying. And then there, there's so many other players, prospects, uh, other forwards, defensemen, that the New Jersey Devils can definitely rely on this season. So stop being so negative. Okay? It, negativity is not going to get you anywhere. But at the same time, you know, I get it. I get the expectations. I get, you know, getting excited before the year even begins. And then you just get your heart broken. We've all been there, brother. I, I'm not trying to turn this into a life lesson or anything. I'm just saying, just have a little more faith in the team, okay? And I, I like the direction they're going in. Have more faith in Lindy Ruff. Have more faith in Tom Fitzgerald. Have faith in the leadership in the New Jersey Devils. Andrew Burnett is one of our assistant coaches. And if things don't work out with Lindy Ruff, guess what? We could sleep well at night knowing that we have a President's Trophy winner and also a Jack Adams finalist as our uh, backup head coach. So all is well in the New Jersey Devils organization as far as I'm concerned. So let me know what you guys think. What are your expectations for New Jersey Devils? Why are you so cynical? Why are you so negative? And just snap out of it. Like, I think this year is a year that the New Jersey Devils maybe not, you know, be legitimate playoff threats. I'm not going to put that pressure on them, but potentially make it. That's all I got to say. So let me know what you guys think. Continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening once again.